This video will discuss the voting methods called the hair system and approval voting. So the hair system proceeds to arrive at a winner by repeatedly deleting candidates that are least preferred, meaning we delete the candidates that are at the top of the fewest ballots. If a single candidate remains after all others have been eliminated, then he or she alone is the winner. But if two or more candidates remain and they all would be eliminated in the next round, then we would say that these candidates tie. So here's an example. Uh, we have 13 voters choosing between three candidates, candidates A, B, and C. So for the hair system, we look at those first place votes and we delete the candidate with the least number of first place votes. So in this example, we see that candidate A receives five first place votes, candidate B receives four, and candidate C receives four. So since candidates B and C are tied for the least number of first place votes, they're both deleted. And since candidate A is the only candidate remaining, candidate A would win this election. Let's look at another example. Here we have um, 13 voters again, um, again, choosing between candidates A, B, and C. We focus again just on those first place votes. We see that candidate A receives six first place votes. Candidate B receives three and candidate C receives four. Um, and so now, since candidate B received the least number of first place votes, we would delete candidate B and go with who remains. So the remaining candidates would be A and C. So here's what it would look like when we delete candidate B from the mix. And then we, since we only have two candidates now, we could kind of clean that list up. Um, so basically, we took our preference list and squished them um, into consider just a first and a second choice. We only have candidates A and C remaining. Okay, so now again, we look at first place votes only. Candidate A receives six first place votes. Candidate C receives seven. Since candidate A has the least number of first place votes, the candidate A is deleted. And since candidate C is the only candidate remaining, we say that candidate C wins this election using the hair system. Okay, one final example. So who's gonna win this election using the hair system? So we start with those first place votes. A has three, B, C, and D each have one, and candidate E receives two. So since candidates B, C, and D each have the least number of first place votes with one apiece, we eliminate all three of those candidates and only focus on candidates A and E. So here's what it looks like if we delete candidates B, C, and D. So candidate A and E, those are the only ones remaining. We focus only on first place votes. A receives three. E receives five, therefore candidate A is eliminated, and as the only candidate remaining, we would say that candidate E wins this election using the hair system. Okay, so what is the drawback of the hair system? It fails something called monotonicity. So monotonicity says that if a candidate is a winner and a new election is held in which the only ballot change made is for some voter to move the former winning candidate higher on his or her ballot, then the original winner should remain a winner. And in a new election, if a voter moves a winner higher up on his or her preference list, the outcome should still have the same winner. So let's look at an example. Um, this is that very first example that we did uh, with 13 voters and candidates A, B, and C. Um, recall that in this first example, um, candidate A won, right? B and C each had four first place votes, so they were eliminated, uh, and candidate A remained as our winner. So in the second election, 
right? Um, suppose that this single voter, uh, this one single voter moves candidate A, our original winner, higher on their preference list ballot. So what happens? So now when we focus on only those first place votes, uh, this is actually the second example that we did. We see candidate B is eliminated initially with the fewest first place votes. And then when you put A versus C alone, um, C came out to be our winner. And so this is a glaring defect, right? Um, a won initially, this one voter moved A higher on their preference list, but in doing so, uh, our end result was a different winner, winner C. And so this is a defect of the hair system. Um, the hair system was introduced by Thomas Hare in 1861 and was uh, has been known by names such as the single transferable vote system. In 1962, John Stuart Mill described the hair system as being quote, among the greatest improvements yet made in the theory and practice of government. The hair system is used to elect more than 20 city councils in the United States, including Cleveland, Cincinnati, and New York. It's used to elect the city council and school committee in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a park board uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's also used in elections for the Parliament of Australia. Now, there's something called um, Arrow's impossibility theory. So Kenneth Arrow was an economist in 1951. He proved that finding an absolutely fair and decisive voting system is impossible. So if we have three or more candidates and any number of voters, there does not exist and there never will exist a voting system that always produces a winner, that satisfies what we call the Pareto condition, and the independence of irrelevant alternatives and is not a dictatorship. So in other words, if you have an odd number of voters, there does not exist and there never will exist a voting system that satisfies both the Dorset winner criterion and the independence of irrelevant alternatives. And that always produces at least one winner in every election. So the takeaway from this is simply to say that um, there, there does not exist and there never will exist a perfect voting system, right? Through our last couple of videos, we looked at several methods, plurality, board accounts, sequential pairwise, and the hair system. And so this year, we saw that all of those have drawbacks. Um, and this theorem says that not only do those systems have drawbacks, but any other system that anyone is ever going to be able to think of um, will have drawbacks. So when it comes to making a decision as a group, uh, we have to decide what we're willing to live with and what not. Um, and that's how we have to decide which voting method we think uh, is going to give us the result that feels the most fair. There is one final um, option, um, perhaps a better approach is called approval voting. Now, under approval voting, each voter is allowed to give one vote to as many of the candidates as he or she finds acceptable. There's no limit set on the number of candidates for whom an individual can vote. However, preferences cannot be expressed. So voters show disapproval of a candidate simply by not voting for them. Um, the winner under approval voting is the candidate who receives the largest number of approval votes. And now this approach is appropriate in situations where more than one candidate for win can win. So for example, in electing new members to an exclusive society, such as the National Academy of Sciences or the Baseball Hall of Fame, um, approval voting is also used to elect the Secretary General of the United Nations. And approval voting was proposed independently by several analysts in the 1970s. So here's an example. Um, we have five um, people voting um, between candidates A through E. And so um, an X denotes approval for that candidate. So for example, the, the first voter that you see here approves of candidates A and D only. Um, the next voter approves of candidates B, C, and D, and so on and so forth, right? So we simply add um, the number of Xs, the number of approval votes that each candidate receives. So candidate A receives three approval votes. Candidate B had two voters who approved of him. Um, candidate C had two voters that approved of her. Candidate D received four approval votes and candidate E received two. 
So since candidate D received the most number of approval votes with four, then we would say that candidate D wins this election. Okay, so we've now discussed all five voting methods as and also the Condorcet method as well. So uh, I encourage you to look through some of the problems in the handout posted on Blackboard uh, to, to practice all of these methods um, together. Um, and then think for yourself, which voting system uh, did you like best? Which voting system do you think that we should use to elect, uh, say, the president? So uh, the, the, the method that we currently use is most closely related to plurality, where you really only get to cast a vote for one person. Um, so think to yourself, would you rather, do you think the board account method would be better? Where we, where we do scores, do you think, uh, did you like the hair system? What about approval voting where you can, um, you know, mark all of the candidates for whom you approve of? Um, so just something, uh, something for you to think about moving forward. Uh, and our next step will be to consider the manipulability of these voting systems. And I'll see you then. Bye.